Okay, everyone, so with PS5 finally here, we've done a lot of coverage so far on the actual console, uh, the official accessories, and now it's time to look at the accessories that are being offered from other outside companies. This happens every single console generation. These are usually cheaper alternatives to the official accessories that the console manufacturer might offer. So we've got a bunch here from Amazon.com, and we're going to unbox them, review them, and find out if they're worth it. So we've done these videos a few times already for, um, for PS4. And this is one of the first times where we're actually ordering from Amazon, at least in terms of accessories, because I think we've done an Amazon video before. But Amazon will um, combine all their items into as few shipments as possible, so that's why it doesn't look like we have much here, but we actually, I ordered a, a fair amount of things here. I think I spent over 300 bucks on most of this stuff. So getting into this first box here, we have two accessories. This is a charging stand. And uh, there's a lot of these so far. You've got a lot of options. Uh, I could have easily bought four or five of these and they all would have been different. And I say that purposely because uh, one thing that you'll often see on Amazon is multiple listings for the same product over and over and over again from different sellers. And um, I think that's what one of these ones here is. So this is a charging stand with cooling fan, <laughs> which is, gonna be really unnecessary <laughs> so we'll talk about that later but um, I think this one and then a few other products that we ordered here yeah a lot of different sellers and the reason for that is, is uh, on Amazon a lot of people do uh, home businesses called Amazon FBA fulfillment by Amazon usually what you can do there is and anybody can any company can do this of course but it's it's common for a lot of regular folks to do this because all it takes is a fair amount of capital and then you can reach out to uh, a company in China, overseas, uh, on Alibaba.com, order something in bulk, maybe like two, 300 units, set up an Amazon page. And the beauty of, of Amazon FBA as a, like maybe a startup business is that, you know, you only need a, you only need a few thousand dollars and then you can send your entire shipment over to Amazon directly. They'll handle your order, fulfill it, everything like that. And so uh, that's why there's like, I think there's like five or six different listings for that cooling stand we just looked at. And that was like 40 something dollars, which is kind of nuts. Uh, here we have uh, one of these clear cases, which seems to be uh, very popular for the dual sense. And might, uh, maybe this will make sense for some people. Uh, in the meantime, if you don't wanna dirty up the white dual sense, because that is a problem with this controller right now is that Everybody doesn't like the fact that it's white. Um, and now that we do have the machine and we're playing games on it actively, it, it can get dirty. Like, I, I don't have dirty hands, but so far I've actually um, noticed not a lot of, like, grime on it, but, like, on the back of it, you can see where it's already starting to... And this, this will happen naturally over time. It's starting to collect a little bit of dirt. Dead skin cells, lovely. Uh, here's another vertical stand. This is for a digital edition. I think that other one was for, I think that was for both models. The picture says it's for the disc, disc model, but this one is for a digital edition. So we'll, we've got different accessories for both of them. And that's another thing that we can, that's somewhat noteworthy here when you're hunting for accessories for PS5 and you're going down the route of other companies. So not exactly official accessories from Sony. You want to make sure that um, you pick the right one for situations like this because while the console's overall shape and design is slightly different. And that will re reflect the, uh, the accessories that you might need to buy. This is a controller case for the DualSense. And this is uh, probably classic Amazon FBA right here. So the only thing you need if you want to actually uh, pursue this as a career is um, you need this, you know, everything needs to be wrapped in a bag, of course. And if it's a certain size, you need to put a suffocation label and there's your um, UPC code that you can just you can buy like hundreds of UPC codes off of a uh, off of eBay. That's why anybody can really do this. And since Amazon is fulfilling all the orders for you, um, you know you don't have to do it out of your house or anything. Amazon will take a cut. You can sometimes have the entire shipment that you bought over overseas for let's say two three thousand dollars, however many units you buy. You can send it right to Amazon, um, and they'll just start. You don't even do anything outside of maybe um, working directly with the manufacturer to put some sort of custom label on it or something. So I found this interesting because, I don't know, I guess that's another thing about the DualSense, right? I mean, if you want to make sure that it's 
protected and not scuffed or damaged because it's going to show very easily with white. So it's actually a really snug fit. You see that it's got like a, a perfect impression in there. Fits the uh, controller perfectly. And hide some cords or anything if you want up there. Might make sense for certain situations. And then we got... <laughs> you know we had to buy another controller condom. So we've got one here. And uh, we're starting to see some pretty wild colors for these things. And there we go. Your rubbery, protected fashion. And a lot of these listings now are always coming with something a little bit extra. <laughs> like these, um, people love using these. I, I still don't really get it, but these little analog stick nubs. Yeah, I don't know. A little bit of value for your purchase. I think this was like 10 bucks or something, so it's always nice to have a, something extra added to it. It's really up to you to decide if that's cheap or expensive to you. I was about to say, I thought we were missing an accessory, but it's actually in one of these bags that I just tossed away. And it's a mobile phone clamp. So this is probably gonna be very popular this generation as more and more people uh, warm up to the idea of streaming games and using remote play from a smartphone or a tablet. Uh, this isn't gonna fit a tablet, of course, but uh, on PlayStation 4, 5, 3, we've had remote play for a very long time, and now for PS5, again, it's something that more people are warming up to, so you might actually want something like this where um, you can use your dual sense and it's kind of an all-in-one thing, so it would be a weird, awkward setup to not have these. Now, I think you all know what this probably is, because it's just so large uh, and a little dirty, but we have to do a skin for PS5, and this is a very unique console to talk about skins because the shells come off very easily. And so PS5 is in a really awkward situation in that you've got two options and neither of them I think are super favorable unless you're okay with completely painting, painting those shells. It's easy to take them off, there's no screws, no nothing, um, doesn't avoid your warranty and so that's why we're seeing really cool customized consoles. But there's kind of a point of no return unless you're really comfortable with doing that. I mean, Plasti Dip's probably the best way to do it. That way you can tear it off if you mess it up. Paint, of course, is kind of a, a point of no return. But you can do that or you can do console skins like we usually see. But the problem with these is that PS5 is terrible for this. The console design itself um, has no hard edges. It's, um, you know, it's got a lot of these aggressive curves and swooping lines. And then of course the shells themselves, because there are no hard edges, you're gonna have white exposed. It's just the reality of it. These are not going to cover all the white. So uh, it's something that you have to be okay with. I ordered a second skin. This is for a digital edition. Um, I ordered a regular one too, but that is like completely lost in transit. So we're gonna have to go ahead without it but we do have a skin that we'll try out and see how this looks. Now, we've actually got one more accessory that I didn't even bother putting into the center here, and uh, I'll, I'll grab that now. It's, it's a little big, but uh, yeah. This is, <laughs> this is a PlayStation 5 accessory. What could possibly be in here? This was a third of the budget, I think, a little over a hundred bucks. This is a PlayStation 5 carrying case. <laughs> All right, I was thinking this was like way too big. So we've got a box in a box here. Okay, this is a terrible way to put this in transit. What? <laughs> what the heck? Okay, so yeah, so this case might, um, I mean, it's expensive, but I actually think this might make sense if you do travel with consoles. And uh, this business has a lot of these things for any console that you can think of. Very high grade, tough plastic, so I'm pretty sure if you were to drop this thing, uh, your PS5 will be okay. Got one there, got a clip over here. Okay, there we go. Uh, well, you, you can't see me that, on that camera angle anymore. I uh, got a little card here. Directions for customizing pre-scored pluckable foam. Yeah, so I was curious as to if they did this for me already or not. 
and it looks like I will have to do, yeah, all of that on my own. So I guess that's kind of how they get away with offering this for so many different consoles. Yeah. All right, so here is everything all laid out, and it's time to take a closer look at each one of these individually and um, give them a fair review. Let's start with our Galaxy theme skin for the PlayStation 5 Digital Edition. Technically, this was pretty straightforward and not much different from your typical skin application, but that's mainly due to the Digital Edition having symmetric plates. And like I mentioned earlier, I did order a second one for the disc model, but it got lost in transit, so I won't be able to test how much of a pain it would be to apply that skin around the disc drive. But anyway, if you've never applied one of these before, it's much easier than, say, applying a screen protector to a display, because in that situation you're concerned with air bubbles and debris getting underneath. But this has a lot more room for error. You can always peel back and fix your work. It's very forgiving. Just take your time and apply even pressure as you go. I was a little bit off on the plates, but for the most part, it was a clean install. This particular skin had no cutout for the PlayStation logo, and that's probably best. If the cutout was there, that's just going to complicate it and expose even more white. And the dual sense is a completely different story. This is by far the worst I've done, and while I'm sure I probably could have gone slower and been more careful, I can confirm the dual sense is not skin friendly. The curves around the analog stick and just the handles in general will more than likely create air bubbles and creases that are difficult to get out. So that's what happened with mine. But much like the console, the darker trim piece on the dual sense is removed without any screws. So this is also something people are easily painting instead of applying an expensive skin. So here's the final product. I never cared for console skins and I definitely still don't here, but I think you can find some success with these depending on the colors. You can skin the middle and that will provide a clean look, or you can go for a skin that's closer to white so the colors don't clash. Okay, so if you've seen me do these accessory videos before, then you know I don't care for these controller condom things either. I'd never use these, but I do know some folks are really into them, and to their credit, maybe in this situation you would want to protect against staining the white controller. Well, here's some actual problems with this particular grip. It covers too much around the analog sticks, so you actually have to push against it and out of the way when you're playing a game. It also blocks the player indicator LEDs underneath the touchpad, so you might not even realize when the controller is on or off. And like we normally see, it makes the face buttons flush with the grip, so you're pressing into this thing when playing games with it. And the supplied analog nubs, they seem okay, and the grip definitely will protect the controller. But yeah, I'm still not going to recommend these things. The carrying case is good. I mean, this isn't really something I've ever considered needing, just one specialized case for a single controller. But if that's for some reason something that you'd want, this will do the job. The inside will hug the DualSense perfectly, it's a nice soft material, you have a cargo net up top for extra storage, and it even comes with a little lanyard. Not bad. So, the listing for the clear case also came with some button attachments, quite a few of them actually, so we'll look at those in a second. Getting the case on at first though was a huge pain, it doesn't exactly snap in as intuitively as one would think, you really have to mess with it. But once it's on there, you can see it fixes some of the problems that we had with the colored grip. We can see the player indicator and the face buttons are more open. Unfortunately, this too will get in the way of the analog sticks. This is technically worse since the sticks will be pushing against hard plastic instead of rubber. And then the button attachments, I mean, really, the stick risers, they're no good. Those will fall off very easily. The rubber D-pad, which sticks on with double-sided tape, seems odd. There's nothing to even fix here with the stock D-pad, and if there is, this isn't helping it. And then the L2 and R2 extenders. You know, I've said before, these actually aren't too bad. They do feel okay, but these ones also stick on with double-sided tape, and that's why you probably saw earlier they came with extra tape just in case. They don't leave any residue, but with the adaptive triggers on PS5, I could see these maybe just falling off naturally over time, so that might be something to consider. Like I mentioned earlier, you've got a lot of options when it comes to charging stands, and as I've said on a few occasions, I do love these. It's an unnecessary, often expensive convenience, but I do love not having to mess with cables, and Sony's official one is by far the best charging stand I've ever seen. Third-party offerings, you can see the different solutions and arrangements they've gone for, and they're all cheaper than the official one, but that comes with a lesser build quality. With the one I chose here, you can see this one can accept controllers using all these cases, so that's pretty dope. The charging indicator, though, is strange. It stays blue all the time, even when controllers are full, 
but it's red when charging. I'm not sure what's up with that. Seems like a weird decision. This one will also easily move around, so you always have to hold it down when you're removing or connecting a controller. And then there's just the fact that when connecting, you really gotta line the controller up, which that in itself sort of mimics the same hassle of hardwired charging. So unsurprisingly, I'm not jazzed about this thing. Oh, and the charging speed will be based on what you plug into. The USB-C cable was supplied, but really short. The phone mount actually works, which is good considering the one I bought for the DualShock 4 one time just didn't want to fit on the controller. This one does. And unfortunately, I couldn't get any remote play footage for you. The app just wasn't having it during filming. I just couldn't connect. But there's no proper dual sense support for mobile right now anyway, so this really would have been a home network thing where I'm right next to the console controlling it and then just looking at my phone. But this did hold the phone securely. It didn't seem intrusive at all. Maybe a little heavy, but that's going to largely depend on the size of your phone. Only issue is you can't adjust it that far back. Also, I'm pretty sure under heavy use, this will just break eventually, but that's expected in this price range. This was already pretty cheap to begin with. Okay, so this vertical stand is advertised as having built-in cooling vents, which sounds ridiculous, but actually that's not too far-fetched in theory. The idea is you elevate the console a little bit, giving it room to let heat escape, but the bottom of PS5 is not where heat escapes, or at least not a lot of it, so that advertised feature here is a moot point. Now, the real hilarious thing is that there's an opening on the bottom for the screw, but the stock one that comes with PS5 is only threaded so much. Basically, this stand is too short and it doesn't accommodate the stock screw, despite there being an opening. So before even testing this thing, I thought, okay, maybe it secures the console better from potential falls over the supplied stand. So I filmed a comparison and yeah, no bueno. Next up is this ridiculous cooling stand with controller charging and game storage. So the reason why I was explaining Amazon FBA businesses earlier is because normally Amazon has this reputation for customer reviews. You can easily see verified purchases and see what people really think. But with these private label FBA products, you can see I found like four or five different listings for the same stand. They're all the same, different sellers. Whenever a new Amazon FBA product is launched, you need customer reviews to shoot up your page rank. So normally any of these five star reviews early on are coming from friends, family, coworkers. I think there's still Facebook review groups. Whatever the case may be, don't let any of these well-reviewed products fool you. Thankfully, Amazon now labels some of these as early reviews, and that's how you'll know right away if they fit the circumstance that I just explained. Anyway, onto the stand. This thing is 3D printed, and you can tell right away from the groove texture. It does have a piece that's removed to accommodate both PS5s, so that's good. But this thing is indeed your traditional intercooler gimmick, except it's literally pointing into the bottom of the PS5, where we already know there ain't much. Intercoolers never helped anyway, but this is just ridiculous. You can also see it's powered from the front USB, which really breaks any sort of presentation value this thing had. Controllers charge facing down and you can see the LED indicator on the bottom with a switch to turn the fan on or off, which is great because the fan is unnecessarily noisy, and for game storage you can hold up to 14 games. Obviously this looks dumb with a digital edition, but the idea was to use the skin disc model, which I couldn't do, and I wanted this to look as goofy as possible as you've probably guessed from the previous times I've done videos like these, and well, I, I guess technically we've still accomplished that here. But if you do want to see what this looks like without my shenanigans, here you go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the most practical and usable product here. PS5 nowadays is basically like owning real estate or gold, so in transit you'll want to protect it. The foam is all scored, so you can align the console and accessories however you want and just cut around it very easily, or you can even pry it out by hand. And that's all there is really, I did this in a few minutes, you've got room for the console, two controllers, four games, and all the wires needed. You could probably cut out more room too for other accessories and games, and they all fit perfectly. The case being pushed down takes a little bit of pressure to fully close, but that's the foam up top that's hugging your PS5 comfortably. And the case isn't cheap, of course, but this is easily one of the best options for transporting your console if you're going to be doing that this early in the PS5 lifecycle. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And now, as we often do with these accessories, let's give them away. So I've put pretty much everything inside of the massive carrying case, and uh, let's get this sent out to somebody that can actually use them. So I've got a link in the description. You can go follow that, uh, enter in. I'll announce the winner a week from now on my Twitter account. Uh, just a little FYI, I can only ship to the 48 contiguous US states. It's just a lot easier. I like to accommodate international, but for large bulky items like this, not really super favorable. Uh, also, it would be better if you have a PS5 or plan on getting one fairly soon. I would like this to go out to somebody that can actually 
use these things. I'd like it to get used. Um, and that's it. You can also follow on Twitter at Mystic Ryan. Uh, we got a Patreon page if you want to support what we're doing over here. And um, I'll see you all in my next video. You take it easy. Melissa. Yo. What are you doing?